And I'm Jason. And this week we are in Door County, Wisconsin. We are in Bailey's Harbor, which is on the lake side of this peninsula that comes off Wisconsin and we're exploring with some of our subscribers <laughs> so we actually ran into them um, a couple weeks ago in Indiana yeah. and they said that you guys have to go to Door County on your way down from Michigan so they even helped get us a spot down here so we really really appreciate it however they uh, prefer to not be in front of the camera so <laughs> Um, we'll be coming along on our adventures this week, but I'm not so sure you'll see our secret subscribers. <laughs> no, you'll see them. They just didn't want to talk to the camera, which is totally understandable. So we've seen a little bit of Door County so far and it's beautiful, but we're about to go head out and start exploring. So let's go. happening out here all right so we're gonna clean the roof it's been uh, about a year yeah so uh, we have to get up there there we have the black streaks that accumulated so yeah what are those from I was trying to remember algae oh so what it is is that's where our two plywood yeah. come together on the roof and so a little bit of extra heat goes through there that doesn't go out the, the roof vent so you have condensation and so algae grows every four feet but at least it tells us where the plywood comes together yeah exactly so but it's not like harmful to the roof or anything no, right it's it's just unsightly yeah. and so we're putting solar panels up there very <laughs> soon Ooh. and Ray does not want the unsightly algae to be on the roof which I agree with, so let's go get it off. <laughs> All right, so these are the black lines that we are referencing. It's where our plywood meets and the algae forms. Check out my sweet choco cane. No, <laughs> no, I'm not showing your feet, it's gross. So yeah, we tried to get these off about a year ago and we really put some muscle into it, but we just used regular well, we used Awesome. No, that's true. Awesome from the 99 cent store. That stuff is awesome, by the way. So I was really surprised that didn't come off because I've been using that like literally my whole life. My yeah. mom swears by it, but... Well, it's not, it's the Dollar Tree. Whatever. Yeah, we really put some muscle into it last year and it just, they didn't come off. And I don't think they've gotten much worse. Since. No. What do you think? Yeah. But we're gonna try a couple different methods. Alpha Systems is the one who manufactures our roof. So they actually recommend either using Murphy's oil or to specifically get the black streaks off. They recommend a, is it brass? Bristle brush? Yep which sounds really scary, and bleach. So I think we're gonna try just a little corner of that, but we have had people on the Grand Design Facebook group say they've done that and it works. So we're just gonna give it a go, test out a couple different things and see what works and hopefully we get these off because I really don't wanna put the solar panels on top of them, but if we can't get them off, that's what we're doing. All right. What are you doing with that paintbrush? Well, trying the other 
another thing that was recommended, which is slightly terrifying, which is a little bit of bleach and water, and then you put it on the line for 10 minutes, and then that's when you're supposed to take the brass bristle brush <laughs> and scrub it off. So we'll see. I mean, the Murphy's oil alone did a pretty good job. A lot of the black already came off, so we'll see how this does. <laughs> I don't think we should do this anymore. Something just does not sit right with me. I don't like it. Um, I know lots of people use it, but bleach on the roof just bleach doesn't. On the roof. Yeah. Or bleach I'm, on an RV. Well, no, but I feel like the brass is creating like where I'm scrubbing. It's creating darker marks anyway. But then up here where the bleach was working, it's whiter than the roof. So we're gonna have either black. <laughs> mold streaks or whatever it is or white bleach streaks and frankly I would actually prefer a little bit of the black leftover than the bleach because I feel like that could do longer term damage. We're aborting this uh, mission here so the bleach is gonna be a no-go from us uh, but the Murphy's oil is a go so I think we're gonna just keep plugging away at that. <laughs> We're done. We're done. Not 100% happy with it, but I'm so sore already. <laughs> we definitely put a lot of elbow grease into this and we couldn't get every part of every black strip off. And some are worse than others and it actually feels like in general, uh, the back of our RV is dirtier overall than the front. Um, yeah, we're not quite sure why that is, or maybe, you know, we're thinking like we're backing into spots and parking under trees, perhaps, um, you know, over the last year and a half, so. We're driving in the rain and it's just pushing the dirt back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so this is the final product. And I don't know, in person, I keep thinking it doesn't look that much cleaner, but like we didn't do our slide. So if you compare the slide to the roof, it definitely looks better than that. And like these are parts of, you know, these last three black strips really were the, were the hardest to get off. So yeah, oh well, I'm not, you know, if it was bad or bad for the RV or bad for the roof, I think we would continue to put more effort into figuring out how to get getting them off. But I don't think the state they're in right now is horrible and it's not like we're hanging out up here so it's more so just like an aesthetic thing alpha system says can happen to the roof yeah so i think while up here we did just a little of course we checked the the mm -hmm. cock and uh dicor or whatever lap sealant up here and there's a place a couple of places that we're gonna Mm -hmm. fill in so yeah. I think we'll dry those little areas off and we'll do that and then we can relax for the day yeah we're gonna go to a fish boil tonight so you're gonna come with us to that <laughs> so these are the kind of things that you need to look for when you're cleaning your roof and when you're checking your seals because it's cracks and wear like that that you're gonna wanna come around and reseal so you don't have a bigger problem in the future. So we will be addressing that shortly. <laughs> so first, let's go over the two sealants that we have. This is Alpha Systems, so it's the same people that make our roof. We're gonna use their sealant. So we have non-sag sealant, which you wanna use for the sides because as it states, it's non-sag. Um, so you, it won't drip down the side of your RV. And then the other one is the self-leveling sealant, which does drip. Um, 
well, as it says, it's self-leveling. So that's the kind of stuff that we're gonna use to cover up those holes I just showed you because what it does is when you put it over, it flattens out. So self-leveling. And uh, they tell you not to use Dicor on these Alpha Systems um, roofs because it actually causes it to bubble a little bit. And we can show you where we used a little bit of Dicor and you can see the roof kind of like pull and bubble, which is not horrible, but... Um, we weren't supposed to use that? No, that's Dicor. You live and you learn, right? You didn't tell me that, that <laughs> we did that wrong. Hmm. Interesting. I didn't, I didn't know yeah. it until we started looking at more stuff. <laughs> I picked up the Dicor at the the RV park, but uh, or the RV dealership nearest us, and then that's yeah. why I bought all the Alpha online. Well, let me just show you that yeah. right now. That what he's referencing then is when we installed our 360 vent when everything was super smelly and we couldn't figure out what was going on from our gray tanks. Um, once we changed the vent up here on the roof, it completely fixed it. So we haven't had any smell since then. So if you are having that issue because it is getting warmer out, so your tanks might be cooking a little bit, um, we definitely recommend the 360 vent. So. This is Dicor. I guess I'll show you what's wrong. All right, so it's not, oh, I see what you're talking about. Okay, oh yeah, that's not good. <laughs> yeah, so it's pulled up the roof a little bit. Interesting. Okay, well, but at least we don't have any leaks. <laughs> There's a little cutter in the handle. Yeah. That's cool. A little fancy cutter. A little fancy cutter. All right. And then we forgot this part last time and <laughs> broke the tube. Oh, yeah. You remember? It exploded everywhere. Do yeah. you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> we forgot this part, which is the. Oh, is that why? <laughs> break the, the seal in there. Yeah, that was a little ridiculous. All right. So let's give this old tool a try. I mean, I, I mean, we already know how to use it, so. <laughs> Interesting that yeah. you say that. Oh, there it comes. Okay. All right, maybe we'll move the speed up. Oh. Oof. Maybe we'll move that speed back down. Yeah, good idea. Right there. So we're up here in the front cap area and they have one big seal up here. So we noticed that in the middle where it connects underneath, it's the lap sealant has sunk down there and it's kind of starting to crack. So we are going to, I think we should literally put some in the entire crack. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, and then on the edges, the roof where it connects to the trim is starting to peel a little bit. So we're gonna use the non-sag non -sag on that one. So this is the edge where we're gonna use the non-sag. And then also I noticed that this was really easy to peel off. So I'm just gonna peel that off and we'll put more lap sealant on that screw there. Normally if it's really easy, like this doesn't come off. If it's really easy to peel off, you're gonna wanna peel it off uh, before you put the new stuff down. How do you think that went? I think it went okay. <laughs> I think it went okay too. I mean, the roof, when it dried, it actually looked cleaner than I thought it did when it was wet, if that makes any sense. And then you could really see the comparison when you compared it to the top of the slide that it was a lot cleaner. So I do feel comfortable putting solar panels down now. I don't, at least we won't Good. be, you know, 
screwing into a dirty roof and then putting sealant on top of a dirty roof. That's what just like didn't sit well with me. So I think we're definitely ready for solar on our next uh, sunny day. So now we're just about ready. We were up there longer than we wanted to as usual, but we're just about ready to head out to a fish boil, which is a Wisconsin thing, I think, right? Or do they yeah. do it other places? Never heard it's of the a first fish place boil. I've ever heard of it. Yeah. So I'm excited to see that because they throw like gasoline or something on yeah, the Yeah, this one they had like a boil over or something crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's so. what it's called, boil over. Um, so that should be really fun. But we've been having a great time here. We've actually been here a week already here in Door County. Um, just being shown around to all of these beautiful places. And it's been so fun to explore it with uh, the two locals that we're here with because they know, you know, the history and um, they grew up here. So we're learning a lot of fun facts as well and the first day was really just like nothing but sightseeing from the car like they pretty much took us around the entire peninsula and it was beautiful yeah we got out at like every little town explored and then got back in and went to the next town and it was really yeah. cool yeah. there's a state park up here by the way um we don't think we drove through <laughs> to see if like our rig would fit and the couple that we're with has is there is there's 43 feet uh, I don't know, but it's close. Yeah, it's yeah. basically the same size as ours, if not a foot bigger. And there's one tree in there. The spots can fit you, but the turns cannot. So, unfortunately, if you have a big rig, you can't comfortably maneuver around this state park but anything smaller than that you definitely could get in i think so yeah. it's a great state park it was huge lots little, of bike trails yeah they have an amphitheater there where they actually have real plays <laughs> that you can go watch. So normally most state parks or campgrounds in general kind of die down at night, but this place actually had like a nightlife and has plays there all the time mm -hmm. and like really active community we've been told, yeah. so. Peninsula State Park in Wisconsin. So check it out. Yes. Throw it on your list. Yes. And then we went a little bit further down and we saw this barn it's an art gallery but it looks like a barn and it's completely painted over anyone can go down there and paint their names on it so we had a lot of fun looking at that it was just really cool quirky little thing for the area and then we went and saw goats on a roof <laughs> so there's a restaurant down here that has grass on their roof. They have 35 goats <laughs> that can go out on this roof and they just eat the grass. It's really funny. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. so cool. And right next door is a brewery. It's the same. It's part of the restaurant, but it's a different building. And the beer definitely wasn't half bad. Yeah, it's always good. They had a nice little outdoor patio section. You could bring your pup. Yeah. So that's only been about a day and a half overview of our time here in Door County, but we got to go to the fish boil. So we'll tell you more later. So we simply boil it over. And I do that by applying two cups of fuel oil directly into the fire. That'll increase that temperature just enough to carry that oil over the side. You can see that starting now. Boil over! So that was the fish boil, or boil over is what it's called. And this is in Fish Creek, 
Yep. And we are currently in Founders Square, is where the restaurant is right behind us here. So that was really cool. I loved the heat, like it gets so hot. Um, we didn't actually eat the fish just because boiled fish doesn't sound too yummy to us. Um, so uh, we all got something a little bit different, but overall dinner was. Okay, right. we had to switch over to the <laughs> camera died. <laughs> Other camera, yeah. All right, so that was really cool. I am stuffed. You got mm -hmm. free dessert, or yes. dessert was included. Yeah, and it wasn't free. free. <laughs> so next, we're heading over. They're having a festival called Fireball, and they do a whole bunch of really fun Nordic inspired stuff, and they end the night with burning a bonfire which symbolizes the winter witch yeah, so burn the winter witch yeah burn burn it down let's get nice <laughs> summer days like today for the rest of the summer rest, the rest of the summer. year maybe we'll go back to mm -hmm. california <laughs> yeah. um but yeah so let's go see what's going on there and let's go burn that winter witch let's go burn the witch was just editing the video you're watching right now and realized that we never did an outro. So with that said, um, there was one more very important day that we had while we were in Door County. And that day was... Saturday? <laughs> it was Jason's birthday. <laughs> Yay. So we actually took the ferry over to Washington Island and we went to um, this, I think it's called Nelson's Hall. Yep. And it's a Nelson's Dance Hall. Oh, and it's a Bitters Pub is also what it's called. And you're probably wondering what that is, but this island has the most consumption of bitters in the world. And we looked this up before we got there because we were like, that's a weird fact about this area, what's going on? So basically what happened was this bar has been there for quite some time. And then when prohibition happened, the owner at the time didn't want to shut down. So he he went and got his like pharmaceutical license. Yeah, he was a right? pharmacist or something yeah. like that. And then started writing prescriptions for the locals um, who had like stomach aches. Uh, and prescribing them bitters. And when he was reading me the story online, I was like, this doesn't make any sense. Like how are, does bitters have alcohol? Cause normally I've only seen it, you know, a couple drops in one drink. And sure enough, it's like 70 proof. Yeah. And you can still taste those couple of drops. Yes. So um, basically they ended up trying to shut him down a couple times throughout Prohibition. He even went to court for it and the, he gave the, a shot of bitters to the judge and the judge took it and he said, anyone who is willing to get drunk off of this, um, you can keep doing it. Like, this is disgusting. So <laughs> it's technically one of the oldest bars in the US because they never got shut down during Prohibition. So we thought that was really, really cool. So you can still go to the island today. You can still take a shot of bitters and you get your bitters card and you join the bitters club and it's all just very fun. So, and very unique. So it was really fun to do that on Jason's birthday. Yeah, bitters 
coats your mouth and uh yeah. it's like a christmas tree shot it's another way that they call that's it that's what they call it yeah that and, sounds so nice and it's it's <laughs> you taste it for the rest of the day there's nothing you, you can did. do to get it out of your mouth <laughs> i did not i feel like you kept burping it up or something. yeah it's, but it's bad. Yeah, so with that said, um, we did take the ferry over there and it was really rough waters. So we got some of that on camera for you. And then we ended up having to go around another little island because the water was so rough. But on the way back, we crossed this area called Death's Door, um, which is what the alcohol, what, is, what kind of? Gin. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, so Death Door Gin. I'm sure you've seen the bottles because we were actually familiar with the bottle and we didn't realize it was from this area. So anyway, we got to have a bitter shot and cross Death Door on Jason's 31st birthday. So we're just going to show you a little bit of that right now. I really hope you enjoyed that footage of us taking the shots because I did not, neither one of us had a good time. But <laughs> anyway, so uh, on Washington Island, we spent the rest of the day exploring there. Um, we also got to see something called Schoolhouse Beach, which was all rocks. And it was just really cool the way the rocks were flat and smooth and um, just like a really cool area to go check out. And then I think one of my favorite parts about this island, it's so random, but they have an area called Little Lake and it's literally a lake on the island, which is surrounded by a lake. So it's just, I don't know, it's like, inceptioning itself as a as an island in a lake anyway um but it was very beautiful this little lake area so that was a lot of fun as well one of my favorite places we visited was stav kirk church which was like a instagrammable spot <laughs> that we found uh when googling washington island and it's really cool it's like nordic looking and on the outside it's like really dark wood mm -hmm. but then you go inside and it's just like really really light wood and yeah uh, there's still pews and stuff and i think it's a acting church still active is, yeah active yeah so. i think it is we thought it was going to be abandoned from the pictures we saw online but the outside and the inside are like so contrasting it was really cool yeah and then we also went to the top of this tower and it showed how out of shape we were <laughs> it's like the mountain lookout tower and you can see almost the entire island it was really really cool we spent some time up there and carmen came too Yes, she liked it. She had fun looking out. She has no fear, which gives me a lot of fear. <laughs> but yes, it was beautiful to see like basically the whole island from this lookout point. And then the last thing that we checked out were the lavender farms. There's actually two uh, farms there. So they weren't in bloom. We really wanted those beautiful pictures, but oh well, it was still, you know, a really cool thing to see. So that was the rest of our time in Door County. And we also wanted to take this time to thank Steve and Janet so, so much for showing us around because there is no way we would have seen as much as we did without you guys. <laughs> like yeah, we're definitely. so bad about getting out of the RV cause we get really caught up in work or we'll spend like one full day exploring. But it was actually really nice to have someone there to not only show us around and take us to the best places, but 
also motivate us to get out. So thanks again, guys. We really, really appreciate it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Otherwise, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to join our getaway gang. We'll see you next time. Bye, Bye guys. guys. Thanks. Oh, you need help? Oh, <laughs> Should I do it? <laughs> that looks like a new tool I haven't seen before over there. What? <laughs> We've had that. No, we have not. Yeah. <laughs> we just cleaned out the RV. How'd that go? <laughs> oh man, I look scary with this like lighting. I'll take a step this way. Oh, yeah, perfect. Oh, perfect. Hello. Car? You didn't want to move? You just wanted to... <laughs> Look at that belly. Carbons? Or mine? <laughs>